Hello fellow members of the Midnight Society. Welcome back to another episode review from the show Are You Afraid of the Dark? Last time, we covered the tale of the full moon, a frank story about a young boy who thinks a werewolf has moved in across the street. Tonight's narrative, from David, is about a teenager who is haunted by the tragic death of a childhood friend. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this Season 2, Episode 10, The Tale of the Shiny Red Bicycle. We open on the gang roasting marshmallows and waiting for David and Kristen to arrive. They finally do, and we find out why they were late. Unless I miss my guess about those two crazy kids they were making out in the woods. Sorry we're late. Hey, I, I heard about your bike getting stolen. You okay? Oh. Lame. Anyway, the group gets really emotional over the theft of David's bike, leading to the following statement. Once you have the right bike, it's yours forever, no matter who has it. What? Look, I've owned a number of bikes in my time and never formed an emotional attachment to any of them. I mean, sure, I had a stuffed Littlefoot dinosaur until I was older than I'm comfortable admitting, and, and yes, yes, it still pains me the way it left my life. Just staring at me. As if to say, don't let me go. I love you. But that, that is not the point here. I have to cut, there's something in my eye. Seriously though, David needs to hurry up and ask Kristen out because it kind of sounds like that bike was his first love and I don't want to think about what they did behind closed doors. <laughs> David prepares the group for his story by saying, A bike that meant so much to him that he took it everywhere he went, including his own grave. Creepy, if it's relevant. Yeah, that's right. I'm calling you out, Are You Afraid of the Dark Riders, for saying things in the opening that don't always pay off in the story. Yeah, well, what can you do? The tale begins with two boys racing their bikes along a waterway leading away from a river. They stop on a bridge that crosses that channel. During the race, an old man opens the floodgate, allowing a rush of river water into the man-made channel. The torrent rushes under the bridge, and as it does, the railing gives way, causing one of the boy's bikes to fall into the water, quickly followed by the boy himself who loses his footing. He catches the side of the bridge, and his friend tries to pull him up, but then this happens. What, uh... What are we doing here? Are you afraid of the dark? Did you just kill a kid in the opening of the episode and then show us the surviving kid having a nightmare about the incident years later? That's so sad. How am I supposed to work with that? I got an upbeat mood on this show and you go and throw in a realistic tragedy and the emotional scarring for the survivor of said tragedy? You were unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't fucking work like this. Can I just start with this statement again? A bike that meant so much to him that he took it everywhere he went, including his own grave. <laughs> You've already lied, David. I'm not saying the kid didn't love his bike, though we certainly don't get to see him or the bike long enough to make that assertion, but the bike fell and then he fell. He didn't go all Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. I can reach it. Give me your hand, give me your other hand. <laughs> I'm pretty sure any love he had for that bike was immediately replaced with self-preservation. He was trying to pull himself up and lost his grip. You can't be all like, Our main character, Mike, is racked with guilt for not being able to save his friend Ricky from falling into the waterway years before. He has constant nightmares about the event, and this particular one leaves him sluggish at the breakfast table, prompting his dad, played by budget Paul Giamatti, to say, Looks like someone's gonna fall asleep in his corn wackies. I'm sorry, his what? His corn wackies. Introducing Corn Wackies, the breakfast cereal that's made from corn, but it's so wacky that each box comes with a full cob of corn. That's right, I'm talking about Corny Cob here. And don't worry, kids, that corn is injected, infused, soaked, coated, and sprinkled with high fructose corn syrup. Yeah! Part of a complete breakfast. A small part. Corn Wackies! Mike's little brother Ben reveals that Mike had another nightmare about Ricky. Their parents wish that Mike could just stop blaming himself for Ricky's death so that he can get over the nightmares. Yeah, <laughs> if only emotional problems were just that easy to get over. Wait a minute. Isn't Mike's mom Aunt Dottie from the tale of the lonely ghost? <gasps> 
Well, she's acquainted with ghost children. Have her call up little Amanda, who can come and ghost whisper this thing and get Mike sorted. No. No, wait. Wait. If Aunt Dottie's around, that means that one of the most evil villains of Are You Afraid of the Dark must also be nearby. Nobody touch anything. Don't touch my stuff. Okay, who touched something? Was it you, Emily? Huh? Or you, Rob? I, I know how you guys like touching other people's stuff. Zeebs. I'm surrounded by Zeebs. How does one prove that they're not a Zeeb? As Mike is heading to school, he thinks he sees Ricky's bike out front, but after looking away and then looking back, it's a different bike altogether. He's weirded out by it, but he heads into class where he completely zones out until his teacher calls him out. He claims to have been paying attention the whole time, but when she asks what they were talking about, this happens. Uh, well, I, uh... We're not covering I or uh until next semester. Oh, ho, sick burn. I mean, not to, like, you or me or anything, but... But I bet that killed in the teacher's lounge. Not quite. No sooner does that resolve when this happens. <laughs> okay, that, that is some Nightmare on Elm Street right there. Also, Tale of the Frozen Ghost, that's how you do a creepy ghost kid voice. Mike is taken to the nurse where we get another very real moment of Mike explaining his dreams and stating how each time he tries to save Ricky, hoping that he'll be able to change what happened, but he never can. The nurse says that changing the outcome of the dream won't change what really happened, which... I mean, sure is true, but where the hell did you learn your bedside manner? I'm not really seeing patients yet. But I guess I can make an exception. As she's talking, Mike sees Ricky outside again, and when he turns to tell the nurse, this happens. <laughs> Whoever was in charge of the ghost scares this episode? Mmm. Chef's kiss. We cut to Mike being driven home by his dad from another doctor who has prescribed bed rest, which means that Mike is going to miss the first day of fishing season, and I I'm not seeing the downside here. Uh, no one believes that Mike is actually seeing Ricky, and in the middle of his dad explaining his point of view, Mike thinks he sees him again and tells his dad to stop the car and follow Ricky, citing, Dad, please, this will prove I'm not crazy. What outcome are you hoping for here? Worst case scenario, your dad sees Ricky too, and everyone thinks you're both crazy. And best case scenario is... Ricky, I thought you were dead! No way, Mike. I faked my own death, and I've been hiding out for five years. Why? Why would you do that? Come here, come here. Take, take a look over there. And smile, because you're on candid camera! Oh, 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 you got me so good! <laughs> All the years of suffering? Oh, just for a public joke. <laughs> <laughs> they catch up to the cyclist who, of course, turns out not to be Ricky, but a little girl with a similar bike and hoodie to the Rickster. After a brief exchange with his dad, which completely takes the wind out of Mike's sails, we transition to his bedroom, where he is in bed and the whole family is around him. Please, enough of the thermometer. The poor kid's been poked and prodded enough for one day. The doctor says he just needs some rest. I have to say, this is the most wholesome family depiction we've seen on the show. Both parents alive and accounted for? <laughs> I mean, and everyone legitimately cares about Mike, and, you know, while his claims of seeing dead Ricky are being dismissed as per usual with the adult-child dynamic in Are You Afraid of the Dark, there's at least a good reason for it here. You never get the sense that they think he's crazy, just haunted by his childhood event and they just want to see him get past it. It was a nice change of pace, so well done. Your condescension, as always, is much appreciated. The parents head out and we get another touching moment between Ben and Mike where Ben says that he's going to miss not fishing with his brother. He also claims that he believes Mike when he says he saw Ricky. Mike tells Ben to wake him the next morning before he leaves and Mike will sneak out to go with him fishing. Ben then tells Mike a real side splitter of a joke. Ask me why I'm a great comedian. Why are you a great comedian? Jamie! <laughs> <laughs> I guess you had to be there. Later that night, Mike has another nightmare, but this one was different than the rest. Mike. 
me, this episode gave kids some nightmares for sure. I've been working on this one. The next morning, Ben goes to wake Mike, but is intercepted by their dad, who stops him and insists on giving him a ride to the river. To his credit, Ben really tries waking Mike up, throwing pebbles up at the window from outside, but Mike is just completely out of it from his lack of sleep during the night. If Ben really wanted to wake him, he probably should have went with... <coughs> Mike awakes to the sound of Ricky calling him from outside. He decides to confront the ghost getting dressed and heading outdoors. Meanwhile, down by the river, one of Ben's friends asks... Isn't that where your brother's friend got killed? What the f***? What kind of insensitive question is that? Real nice friends you got there, Ben. I'd have throat punched him. Yeah, I know he's like 12, but still, I'd have done it. Back outside his house, Mike encounters the ghost of Ricky. He puts a hand on Ricky's shoulder, discovering he can touch it, but that it's cold. Meanwhile, back at the river, Ben accidentally knocks over jerk friend Soda, and in response, he does... Yeah. Oh, that is it. I have had it with this little prick. I'm gonna find the actor who played him and hit that guy so hard I kill the character. Okay, hold on. Whew, getting a little heated here. <laughs> this is... Back at Mike's, Ricky reveals that he's not there to hurt him, but to warn him that Ben's in trouble because his friends are dickweeds. Okay, doing it again. Doing it again. Ricky provides Mike with his shiny red bicycle and tells him to get going, which results in some high-octane riding music. Ben gets stuck in the waterway as a city worker opens the floodgate from the river. Mike arrives at the spot where Ricky died and freezes up for a moment before hearing Ben cry out for help further down the waterway. He gets to him and frees his brother just in time. Before they head home, Mike heads over and drop kicks Ben's friend into the river. No. No, that doesn't happen. That's... That's just my ending for the story, but uh, no. Mike, uh, he looks at the bike that he rode in on and sees that it is... Ricky's bike, but that it's now unrideable, being all rusted up and warped. David ends the tale by saying, The very next day, a man who was fishing found the remains of Ricky Haggard. Gross. Gary closes the meeting by putting out the campfire as per usual, with magic and a spritz of water. Now for the review. <laughs> what a great episode! This one has it all. A compelling narrative, some good scares, a whole family, a whole family and some decent acting. Interestingly enough, The Tale of the Lonely Ghost was also a David story about a misunderstood ghost, but this was far superior in my opinion. <gasps> the settings weren't really anything all that special, but the school was used effectively with Ricky's ghost showing up in ways that really felt right out of a Wes Craven film. The best set piece was probably the waterway where Ricky is killed. That was filmed on location, and it's easy to imagine that being a safety hazard were you to be caught there when the gates were opened. The story here was solid and dealt with grief and emotional trauma that we don't typically see on the show. I appreciated Mike's family being present and trying to help even if they didn't understand how to. You could see that they really cared, and that made me care about the family as a whole. Keep out of this! While this episode had a fairly happy ending, if you don't count the fishermen who caught dead kid instead of trout, uh, it did have one of the darkest openings I'd seen so far, especially for around the time it aired. Killing a kid in the opening of a kid's show? was not typical, but it really set the mood for the episode. You don't know what Ricky's motivations are at first, so there's a, well, they killed that kid, so maybe no one's off limits this episode vibe. This episode would have definitely scared younger me and probably ensured I never rode a bicycle again. Well, I guess if a person never quit when the going got tough, they wouldn't have anything to regret for the rest of their life. The acting in this episode was pretty good, which is mostly expected from an older cast. Mike does the heavy lifting for the younger crew. Uh, he does a great job of making you feel his grief about the loss of his friend, and his surprise at the horror moments is solid as well. Ben isn't as good, uh, he's younger and isn't given that much screen time, and, and I'm not saying he was bad, I mean you really believe that he cares about his brother, he just wasn't as good as Mike. Ricky's hard to judge, um, you see, all Are You Afraid of the Dark ghosts uh, don't emote, and they, they speak in monotone, so... Hard to know how much of that is direction or just bad acting. Um, Ricky was creepy. In fact, he was creepy as hell, though, as the ghost. So, I guess I'm saying he was great. I'm not here to hurt you, Mike. You're my best friend. The adult acting was also decent here. 
While the dad gets a bit more screen time than the mom, both parents come across genuine in their concern for their son. I really can't say enough how much I enjoyed the family dynamic in this episode. You also had the teacher and the nurse who have very little screen time, but they played their roles well, and, uh, you know, they were both presented in the more traditional Are You Afraid of the Dark adult way, um, as jerks. We are having a bad day, but I had my in-laws over for dinner last night, and needless to say, I need you to cut me a little slack. David, a rare treat from you. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I only say that because I typically hate your stories. The tale of the shiny red bicycle meets the approval of the Midnight Society. And the Midnight Society members poll on this episode was in almost complete agreement with me on this one, with it not meeting the approval of just a small percentage. So my ruling stands. Congratulations, David. Perfect. It's time to thank the Midnight Society members who participated in the poll on this episode, but I keep getting more and more people participating in these polls with each episode, and so now there's so many names that I'm just going to turn it over to the sponsor of The Tale of the Shiny Red Bicycle to handle those shoutouts. That's right, dude. Here at Corn Wackies, we've named each individual little corn on Corny Cobb here after one of you. Let's check it out. Laura, Ray Fizzle, Brittany, Caitlin, Raphael, Matt, Ryan, Jordan, Caitlin, Dan, this one's called Michaela, Cami, Lineal, Jessica, Michelle, Anesha, Justin, Ryan, Eric, Tommy's over here, Rhiannon, John, Thomas, Timothy, Amanda, Rodney, Sarah, Jonathan, Crystal, Chris, Paula, Meredith, Kelly, Adam, Cynthia, Christopher's down here, Patricia, Jesse, Dakisha, Je, Paul, Michael, Nick, Brandon, Mara, Melissa, Jonathan, this squirt over here is called Bapo Screw, Ultimate K-Pit 42, Emily, and Rob. Back to you, dude. What did you all think of David's story? Did you see it as a kid? What were some of your favorite tales from the series? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to check out the next episode about the tale of the magician's assistant. Until next time, are you afraid of the dark? Looks like someone's gonna fall asleep in his corn wackies. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and a share. Be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when more Midnight Society episodes go up. And we've got some other cool shows on the channel, so stick around. You might find something else that you like.